good gut health is absolutely essential for preventing and reversing osteoporosis and good bone health. Absolutely essential. Over the last 20 years, there's been this mountain of evidence accumulating, showing the link between the gut microbiome in the large intestine and healthy bones and or osteoporosis, the other side of it. So I want to make it very clear, if you want to stop osteoporosis, you want to prevent osteoporosis, you want to reverse it, then while I've given you a lot of other information in my other videos, so make sure you watch those videos, they also work through the gut. So what we've got to do now is focus on fixing the gut. And there are really simple strategies that can make a big difference. But let me convince you in terms of the evidence, okay? So first of all, what we know is when you've got gut conditions like uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, which is a major serious uh, gut condition, then you've got a 226% increase of vertebral fracture. So a fracture of your vertebrae. Wow, that is huge. And how does that link with the gut? Well, you'll see that in a moment as I spell it out. Then you've got Helicobacter, just a bacteria that causes uh, stomach ulcers. And uh, uh, oh, we've got a whole video on just how to prevent and reverse Helicobacter um, infestations. And basically, it leads to a 62% increased risk of bone fractures. How come? Why would a bacteria in the stomach have something to do with bone fractures and or osteoporosis? Then you've got long-term antibiotic use increase in bone fractures and decrease in bone density. And <clears throat> then you've got all of your allergic disorders, things like asthma, urticaria, dermatitis, which are uh, allergic reactions. All of those are predispose you to a greater incidence of osteoporosis, lower bone mineral density. So the message is, well, there is a clear, clear link. By the way, all of these are clearly linked to the gut. And I did a paper on that back in 2003, linking allergies and the gut microbiome. And so that's now overwhelmingly convincing it was back then. While all of that is getting you to think about it, what becomes convincing is when you look at the gut microbiome in the case of dysbiosis and the link with osteoporosis. Dysbiosis is when the large intestine gut microbiome, where there's 100 trillion microorganisms in the gut, and they're out of balance. There's too many of the opportunistic ones and not enough of the commensal or the beneficial ones, and they're out of balance in there, and as a result. And all of the studies show that, that not just that you, if you've got dysbiosis, you have, are more likely to have osteoporosis, but the greater degree of dysbiosis, of dysfunction in your large intestine, the greater the degree of osteoporosis. So it's really simple. That, that is literally the one that, mm, okay, well, that's getting convincing. Well, let's go further into this. And the studies then show that research on probiotics, and the good thing is I'm going to show you the probiotics that do work in terms of improving the gut microbiome to improve have been shown to actually work with osteoporosis and bone density, so stay tuned and, and, and just hang on a few extra minutes for that one. But the, the studies on probiotics overwhelmingly show the, uh, a, benefic a beneficial effect of the probiotics on bone health. So some of the earlier studies were a bit questionable, but now they're coming through and they're, 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 there's a lot of research going on and they're showing probiotics. And, and different probiotics seem to have more beneficial or not as many beneficial effects. So, but anyway, coming up, we'll see that later. Then you've got the prebiotics. And the prebiotics are the things that feed the probiotics. These are the, the fibers. These are the things like the sugar cane fiber. These are the things like inulin and the, you know, the, the ones that everyone's touting now that you should be going out and getting uh, because they feed it. So um, just having probiotics is great, but when you've got probiotics and prebiotics mixed together, it's a win-win. It multiplies the benefit of it. And the studies on prebiotics on their own and in combination show that it actually benefits osteoporosis. It starts to improve the conditions there, reversing it, um, preventing it and starting to reverse it. And one of the chemicals in there that are result as a result of uh, breaking down the prebiotics, so the fibers, we can't digest them. We don't have the digestive enzymes to break fibers, but the gut microbiome do, a healthy one. And as they break them down, they produce all these chemicals. And one of those is butyrate. And butyrate on its own has been shown. So butyrate as a supplement on its own, you ready? On its own has been shown to stop osteoporosis and begin to reverse it. So increase bone mineral density. Wow, 
And we know where does it come from? It comes from the fermentation of fibers in the large intestine by the good bacteria. So again, a win-win situation. Then we've got another one on the market now called postbiotics. And postbiotics are, are very new. And postbiotics are literally dead probiotics. And they found that in, in some of the studies that people who were getting some probiotics, but hold on, they've already been traveled and destroyed and they weren't no, they weren't any, living any longer. These postbiotics, also called ghost biotics, were dead probiotics and they were still having a beneficial effect. So they worked out that the breakdown products of the probiotics, of the good bacteria, were actually having a benefit. So their chemicals being produced from the breakdown of the wall and the breakdown of the cell uh, and anything else in there was having a beneficial effect. And so the studies now show that postbiotics have a, a benefit on bone health, on reducing the risk and preventing osteoporosis. So we've got probiotics, prebiotics and postbiotics all show that. But here comes the absolute convincer. There is no doubt. So already you're going, wow, okay, so I've got to get some of this and you'll learn about some of the, the varieties of the probiotics later on. But the most convincing one is the fecal microbiome transplant. And there are different versions of that. But what, essentially what they do is they take a poo out of one animal and put it in another animal and see what it does to it. And they've done this to do with weight loss and depression, and dozens and dozens of conditions, okay, in terms of experimental animals. And so what they've done here is they've actually uh, done mice with osteoporosis and taken the poo from that and put it in mice without osteoporosis and they start to develop osteoporosis. Similarly, when they take the poo from healthy mice and put it in mice with osteoporosis, it reverses the osteoporosis. So we know that fecal microbiome is absolutely critical. So we know that the, the, the poo from those healthy mice is good, and we know the poo from the, uh, osteo, um, uh, uh, the osteoporotic mice is negative. And then we've got, um, we've literally got young rats the poo from them given to old rats who have osteoporosis and the old rats develop a healthy gut microbiome and, and stop, prevent osteoporosis in its tracks. But the most convincing one you're probably looking at, well, we can't transfer mice poo into human poo, but into humans, but we've got human poo from healthy individuals going into mice with osteoporosis and it reverses the osteoporosis in the mice. And similarly, they take uh, human poo from people with osteoporosis, put them in uh, mice, healthy mice, and literally it reverses it. Now it sounds a little bit crass and so on, but in terms of experimental information, it's overwhelmingly convincing. There is no doubt that the gut microbiome plays a huge role in osteoporosis and bone health. So the first thing we need to do is focus on it. And why does it have such a, a positive effect? Well, we know here are some of the conditions that are created by the gut microbiome that are positive for uh, reversing, stopping, preventing, and reversing osteoporosis, improving bone health. We know that, uh, and you've seen the other videos, I've got other videos already on osteoporosis. Make sure you check them out because they've got a lot of really good inform information in them about what you can do, little steps that you can take that can make a big difference. You, you probably don't know that prunes are a superfood. That's one of the videos we've done. Prunes are a superfood, but they work through the gut. So if you work with the gut and prunes at the same time, you get a win-win. But coming back here, we got we know inflammation and oxidation are two major factors and the gut reverses those. The gut is a major source of inflammation and oxidation and if you're fixing your gut, you reverse those straight away. Estrogen, uh, postmenopausal, perimenopausal, postmenopausal women know that estrogen is a major player in there and estrogen has a huge role to do with bone health and osteoporosis. And what we do know is that in the gut, estrogen is kind of recycled and put into a form called, it's the conjugated, into a form that the body can use again. And as a result, it improves bone density. It improves the estrogen levels in women's body. Hence, uh, menopausal women, all the stuff I've seen on that, uh, the gut is again critical for the health in the uh, menopausal ages. And then you've got uh, uh, estrogen, the phytoestrogens. These are the plant-based ones that can mimic estrogen and can be really beneficial uh, for having along those. And we're off, it's often touted that you should be having some of the linseed and some of the flaxseed and, and some of the uh, soya and some of the, all these things. So they're all in all nuts and seeds. But how effective they are depends on the health of your gut microbiome. 
And if you've got a healthy gut microbiome, then you're gonna get more of these phytoestrogens that can go in and help you. Then you've got, we know that butyrate, the chemical that I mentioned earlier, it's called a short chain fatty acid. Butyrate uh, actually stimulates a parathyroid, or parathyroid hormone to actually increase bone density, increase the action of the osteoblasts to put bone on and slow down the osteoclasts, which take bone and recycle it off. Then thyroid hormones, it has a direct influence on thyroid hormones. Mitochondria, mitochondria are the little cell, the little organelles, the little components inside the cells, which are your furnace. They're the powerhouse of all of your cells in activity. You have a lot of energy in the day, then you've got healthy mitochondria. If you don't, well, in the case of lots of diseases, we now know that it's linked to the mitochondria, and we know that the gut, good gut health, looks after mitochondria, as does, by the way, time restricted eating in terms of fasting and the some i put together some great videos for you to understand how they work with the gut and by the way help with bone mineral density so check out the videos below by the way make sure you subscribe and share this information with all your friends tick the box the information you're getting here is pretty unique and i have no doubt you'll be going wow why haven't i been told this because Nobody else knows it except you. So then we've got serotonin and melatonin. These are neurotransmitters produced in the gut. A healthy gut produces a, a better balance, more of them. And we know serotonin because that's the feel-good chemical. And melatonin is the sleep one, but they're also potent neurotransmitters which send messages around the body. And one of those messages is to build up on bone health. Then you've got basic one is nutrition. If you've got good gut health, you've got better nutrition. So you get the peptides, the breakdown of the, of the uh, proteins into these little molecules that go around to the body and become messengers and add to bone health. You increase your magnesium, calcium, boron, and a whole raft of other uh, nutrients that are absorbed into your, into your body. Polyphenols like resveratrol and coercetin and the green tea extracts. Resveratrol is the one you get in red wine and, and in uh, dark grape juice. The, the, from the actual skins of them, very powerful, as you'll see in my other videos for uh, preventing and reversing osteoporosis, hence why you should be watching those other videos as soon as possible. Uh, of course, and you're getting apples and onions, and again, these become more effective when you've got a good gut microbiome. And then finally, your gut on its own helps recycle, remodulate, and make vitamin D more effective, and we all know that vitamin D is critical for good bone health, but it also, in your gut, you produce vitamin K and B12, both essential for, for healthy bones. But what's critical here is vitamin K is actually known as the calcium, um, I suppose, transporter. It moves it, it takes it out of the arteries and puts it on the bone. So it's absolutely essential. And where do you get it from? Well, your primary source is from the gut. The probiotics that show up consistently now in the dozens and dozens and dozens of studies include ones like Bifidobacteria longum and Bifidobacteria bifidum. Now where I've got an orange asterisk here also shows up as, in terms of being effective, as a postbiotic. So literally the live bacteria, and even when they're dead, they work. So the live and the dead work in a positive way. Now, if they don't have an asterisk, it doesn't mean that they don't work, it's just that I couldn't find the study yet probably. So my message is that they work in probably both for all of these. So we've got Bifidobacteria bifidum, Lactobacillus acidophilus, very common in yogurts and probiotic supplements, Remnosus fruitarii, uh, Lactobacillus passei, Plantinum uh, caesii, and down the bottom, Bacillus clausii, and a, a uh, becoming quite popular now is Bacillus coagulin. Now, again, as I said, these work both as probiotic and if you've got the asterisk, I've been able to find studies literally linking them together as a benefiting in postbiotics. So they work both live and dead. Now, you don't get that many postbiotics in the market, but they're starting to come on at the moment. And then you've got the other aspects which enhance it. And we know about prebiotics. Uh, the benefits of prebiotics are overwhelmingly my favorite is the sugar cane fiber, one that we call K-fiber because it works the whole length of the colon. And the prebiotics and probiotics, when they're together, they form something called symbiotics. And the studies show that that combination of the prebiotic and the probiotic together works better than them individually in most cases for bone mineral density. And the reason is probiotics are great for going down there but you want to make sure you feed them properly. 
and that's what the prebiotics are. They're the feed for the probiotics. And of course, plus the postbiotics, and there are some brands now coming out with a couple of extra things, prebiotics, uh, probiotics, and even postbiotics combined in there as well. Now, the studies also show that fermented foods, and in particular, the one that stands out in the fermented foods is kefir. But the big human epidemiological studies show that the more of the fermented foods you eat, whether it's um, you're living in Eastern Europe having sauerkraut or you're living in Japan and having um, kimchi and all those other things that you have in uh, some of the Asian countries, uh, they all contribute to it. But the studies are more consistent with kefir showing up. Now, with all that in mind, this is the key, the trigger, the baseline mechanism that you need to understand to be able to rebuild your bone health, uh, bone mineral density and reverse osteoporosis. And in the process, it's a win-win situation because you have so many other benefits, cardiovascular, skin, immune system, you name it. Uh, and again, lots of videos I've got on that. But in the meantime, if you are interested, further interested in osteoporosis, watch the other videos that I've got up here. One specifically on prunes and how they're a superfood for probiotics. And as a result, the gut, they work hand in hand with the probiotics in the gut. And then we've got another one on melatonin plus some other supplements they used in a 2017 study to show how they all enhanced each other. And another one on acidosis and so on. There's a lot of information on osteoporosis. And it's not about doing one thing. It's about doing the whole picture, bits and pieces of whatever you can, keeping it cost effective, but making sure you're doing the right thing for your bone health.